For the innocent animals in the wild, the loss of sight is a sentence of death. For humans, it can be worse than dying. Being blind is the same as being exiled from the world that moves, lives, breathes with all the energy that nature has to give. Blindness is a living death, the death of a normal life, and more sadly, the death of the hopes and dreams for a future like everyone else. With no future to look forward to, living can be a dark and terrifying experience. Without a guiding light to show the way, many blind people feel helpless, surrounded by a world in motion they cannot feel part of, cannot join. Even the faintest ray of light, though unseen by the sighted person, shines brightly as a gift of faith for the visually impaired. A sun has risen into the darkness that promises to bring an end to the hopelessness. That source of light is the Myanmar Christian Fellowship of the Blind, commonly known as MCFB. MCFB is located in the Kawai Chan Ward of Myangon Township in Yangon, Myanmar, the nation's capital. It is the home of the Yangon Education Center for the Blind, one of the largest institutions of learning of its kind in Southeast Asia. MCFB was founded in 1975 by a group of 14 blind men who recognized an urgent need for just such a special educational facility, but it wasn't an easy or simple thing to do. The laws under the government at that time made it very difficult to open a private legal school for the blind. Another serious stumbling block was the lack of recognition by the Myanmar Council of Churches. Then, in 1979, MCFB became a part of the self-supporting Karin Baptist Mission Society, whose goal is helping people from all walks of life, regardless of nationality or race. This meant that at last, MCFB would be formally accepted by the Council of Churches. From then on, the road to change was wide open. Initially, MCFB had to face many hardships. The organization was very poor. Their accomplishments were modest, limited as conditions permitted. In the beginning, the first students were taught their lessons as well as handicrafts in the homes of the founding members, sometimes when no other space was available outside under the trees. Even though recognition brought about meaningful changes, the survival of MCFB was not guaranteed. In 1981, the Christopher Blinden Mission in Germany offered significant financial assistance towards the purchase of land and the construction of a distinctive and spacious new school building. By 1983, an increasing number of benevolent well-wishers from home and abroad began to make generous contributions, which brought about great strides to improve the school and its work. We have five aims. Our fundamental principles come from the Bible which tells us we must try to give recovery of sight to the blind. Our educational purposes are divided into three main areas. First of all, to promote the general educational level of the students that come to us. Secondly, to teach them things that they will need to learn in order that they might stand on their own feet. And thirdly, it is very important that we try to guide our young people to feel confident so that one day they will join the world as equal. There are four departments within the MCFB working to support and promote the two schools. The first school is in Yangon, which is located in the nation's south. The second facility, serving the northern regions, is located in Michina, the capital of Kachin State. At present, there are 84 full-time employees, including 27 blind staff members. Sa Taungji is originally from a small village in the southern delta region called Quin Lei Su in Aowri Division. He first came to the school at MCFB in 1981 when he was 14 years old. He has gone on from here to the University of Yangon where he is in his junior year studying psychology. He lends his free time as a volunteer proofreader in the teaching aids production department. We publish Bibles and religious books in Braille. We also print textbook and teaching aids, talking books as described by the education department. In addition to that, we have been putting out a monthly Braille magazine since January 2000. 
Our other publications include topics of general interest and religious alternatives as well. In 1994, both the German government and the Christopher Blinden Mission donated computers and printers specially adapted for the blind. As a result, the computer section at MCFB was opened in 1995. Our recording studio is a division of the department that produces teaching aid materials. Our students express a keen desire to read books from all around the world that are not yet available in Braille. If they were to be translated for reading, the books would end up being too large for practical use. So we record them on audio tape for easy access. The talking books provide a wide range of knowledge on many subjects. The students can absorb what they hear without the need for assistance from someone else. In 1983, a frightened, sightless nine-year-old girl arrived from Kachin State to begin the fourth standard at the Yangon Education Center for the Blind. Her name was Dwe Ra. Today, she works as the librarian in the Communication, Information, and Services Promotion Department while she continues her studies as a Myanmar literature major in her senior year at Yangon University. We have novels in our library in both Braille and talking books, foreign language books that have been translated into Myanmar are quite popular. There is a growing demand for more, but their size makes them cumbersome for everyone. Our books on tape are far more convenient. We also provide magazines in Braille. Both middle and high school level students come in to borrow our books. Even with the loss of sight, there are four other senses ready to fill in, ready to take over for unseeing eyes, so that no one should ever give up the dream of living a dignified and meaningful life. The Rehabilitation and Placement Department at MCFB helps guide the young students to use their other four senses so that they won't surrender from the world around them, but will find the skills and courage to build a real future for themselves. From Chin State in the Northwest, Kan Kin Moon came to MCFB in 1985 to be a teacher. As a blind man himself, he has been an inspiration to his students working hard to become equal and independent citizens. As soon as I joined MCFB, I began primary education. I also began studying handicrafts. By 1989, I had developed a sufficiently high level of skill to be appointed a vocational instructor. At first, I taught them basic things. When the students are able, they produce finished garments for sale. We hold an open-air fun fair, usually around the second week of November, during which the students have a chance to sell their goods in a typical market setting. Some of our products, like doormats, are sold in large quantities to those traveling on an evangelical tour, taking them all around our country and sell them to the local people. The profits are then donated back to us and are used to buy raw materials. Nala Boy Tu joined the MCFB 12 years ago to serve as the head of the Christian Education and Evangelism Department. We encourage the new children not to give up hope, even though they have lost their sight. The applied arts of handicrafts give our students a renewed, positive outlook on life. The younger students must first concentrate on their basic education. 
while older people who come to us later can join our arts program directly. But most important, we work to support our students in becoming confident, energetic young adults with good moral values. Knowing that we accept anyone from any race or religion helps young blind children overcome their fears about joining our school. The present population of blind persons in Myanmar is about 600,000 and only a few are with us. So my first priority is to expand our work to meet the needs of as many people as we can. The Yangon Education Center for the Blind is the principal educational arm of the MCFB. Students are taught to read and write in Braille from the first through tenth standards when they graduate. Normally, there are about 150 live-in students residing in on-campus hostels. There are a small number of students who live at home with their families in Yangon and commute to school each day. When the children first arrive at the education center, it is important that they be trained in orientation and mobility quickly, so they learn to maneuver easily on their own around the school grounds and later out into the surrounding neighborhoods. The tactile language of Braille was invented in 1830 by a blind Frenchman named Louis Braille. Each character is composed of six embossed dots arranged in different patterns to represent each letter or number. Braille is read from left to right as in the standard written form. But in order for Braille to be written, the writer must punch from the back side of a stiff piece of paper printing each character in the sentence in reverse from right to left. The page is then flipped over into the normal reading position. In 1918, Father Jackson translated the original Braille alphabet into Myanmar. Basically, it is not a problem to teach them. They write their lessons in Braille after the teacher explains the subject matter. Our toughest subject is mathematics, especially geometry, where the students must draw shapes. First, we need to teach them by taking their hands and letting them touch the shape of the diagram. I am a teacher and a blind person, so I have to overcome certain problems teaching blind children. I had blind teachers when I was a student, so I learned how to teach from my own experience. Students who show a talent for music have the opportunity to master the musical instrument of their choice if they wish.
I'm a music teacher. I teach the classical Burmese xylophone and piano. Starting piano lessons are based on Myanmar songs and Western scales. I also teach drums, that is, the traditional style drums called dopak. I was happy living at home with my family, just playing my music. But I came here to this school because I knew a good education was important. Since I've been here, I have made many good friends who understand me because we lead the same lives. We share the same problems. Education is important, but I really love music. At this time, the system we are practicing is called center-based. The students are required to come to the school here, where our aim is to teach the blind. We are trying an integrated education system also. It would mean building and equipping local area schools for blind children in outlying towns and villages. If we are successful, students will be able to attend schools near their homes and families. Here, living and learning at the MCFB, our students grow in stature, knowledge, and most important, confidence. As their abilities expand, they come to feel certain that their lives will not be inferior to anyone else's, that their futures promise no less than the futures of the sighted. As time passes, they grow stronger, more self-assured, and hopeful. They will graduate from the Yangon Education Center for the Blind, ready to move forward and strive toward their future goals. I wish in the future to meet other kids who can't see and bring them to this place. My ambition is to graduate, after which I will devote myself to helping other children who are blind like me. I will continue dedicating my efforts in order to bring about continued growth for our organization. I will go on teaching cane and bamboo handicraft to all our future students for as long as I can. MCFB is the candle that brightens their lives. The children are as psychologically and physically prepared as any student at any other school, ready to face the world that awaits them. Their spiritual vision and understanding are their guiding strengths. As the MCFB grew in its early years, it became clear that there was a need to expand their teaching services throughout Myanmar. In 1981, a second school was opened in Michina, capital of Kachin State, now located in the Amyatiar quarter of the city. Today, 12 staff members, including five who are blind, look after the needs and education of nearly 50 students who live at the school. Meanwhile, at the headquarters of the Myanmar Christian Fellowship of the Blind, the work and planning never end. U La Luin and U Fain Luin work without let up, laboring tirelessly to handle the current and future affairs of the organization and schools. The MCFB's public works deal not only with local matters, but are also involved with issues concerning the blind worldwide, working with a variety of social and religious agencies. The MCFB has become truly international. I must say openly, when the kids first arrive, they are blind and feel useless. But after being educated and trained in the school, they're no longer blind but visually handicapped and become intelligent young people with a goal and a purpose in life. Presently, the staff and faculty at the MCFB are busy planning their Silver Jubilee festivities in celebration of its 25th anniversary which will be held on the 1st of April, 2000. It has been a quarter century of struggle overcoming the rough times and difficult circumstances along the way. Mature and strong, dedicated now more than ever, the MCFB waves its silver jubilee flag on high, held aloft with pride and dignity on its way to ever greater success in the century ahead. <laughs>